we should familiarize the new members of the audience with our special relationship with uh, nemesis of the pod, Josh Hawley. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, yeah. for me, it's it's from a distance. Uh, he's just he is now the senior senator uh, from my state. Um, and I just a lot of speculation that you'd run against him one day. Yeah, that you lots beat back. Of, you beat the, back at every chance. That's right. I get I get asked about it a lot, and uh, and we don't have to get into all that right now. But that's not what's happening. I just you know don't vote for him and uh, think he's a, a a weenie. I don't like him. You know, um, right. like I mean, in the sense that he you know runs away from things uh, <laughs> literally. But you have a personal history with him that, you know, not everybody knows. People who haven't listened to this in the past, even people who have may need a refresher. Would you get into that real quick? Well, just a personal appeal to the audience. If you think Jason should run against Josh Holly, hit that like button on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're okay. sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah hit if everybody like hits the like button and subscribes, I'll run. I won't. But, you know, let's find out. <laughs> right. Uh, my relationship is we went to law school together. He was two years ahead of me and he was a bit of a mentor at the time in law school. And... Uh, if I look back, I could see the creepy tea leaves, but you know, I was a, I was, I would say I was less discerning as a person. I was just excited to be there, and it's just been really disappointing to see where he's gone from there. He, I would, he's not the only one who's had a, a turn since law school, but I would say his is the most villainous one eighty mm-hmm. that I've seen. If I've got this right, one eighty, yeah, that's the right geometry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's, so what did he do on Tucker? I actually got this from you because I think you replied to this on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, all right. So, uh, you know, we've been talking a little bit about false choices that people have been uh, teeing up. So let's go ahead and look at this false choice uh, put forward um, by Josh Hawley. Yeah, and I don't think they're unrelated at all, Tucker. I mean, the truth is that Joe Biden and let's face it, congressional Republicans have spent over yeah. $100 billion in counting on the Ukraine war. And meanwhile, the folks in East Palestine have poisoned in the water, poison in the air. It's clear that our infrastructure in this country is crumbling. And what is this administration doing about it? Frankly, what is Congress doing about it? Not a whole heck of a lot. And I think that that's a stark contrast. And I would just say to Republicans, listen, you can either be the party of Ukraine and the globalists, or you can be the party of East Palestine and the working people of this country. But it's time to say to the Europeans, no more welfare for Europeans. Let the Europeans take the lead on Europe. It is time to put the working people of this country first to make those folks strong again and to make this country strong again. Benghazi, 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 East Palestine. Absolutely. That's That's all I hear. Absolutely. And look, we got a, a little more familiarization on Josh Hawley. This is for those who don't, uh, you know, subscribe to the whole like haven't been watching Josh Hawley since season one, which uh, of Josh Hawley, what you need to know about Josh Hawley is that he is the Trump hotels of, you know, working class champions, which is to say, like, I've never been in a Trump hotel, but. Having watched his presidency, I operate under the assumption that like the the gold faucet, if you like took a butter knife to it, it would not be gold. It would just be like a little gold paint. And like I, I assume that like the gold doorknob is like constantly falling off. Like it's it's all a facade. And so Josh Hawley is really good at the rhetoric of working people and looking out for working people. But Josh Hawley is a dude who has been a vocal champion of right to work, of union busting and that's who the dude is like he right. he's got this lane that he's trying to carve out for himself where he's talking about how well, we should cap insulin at a certain amount which is a really easy position for him to take when like he's he knows that he's not going to be the deciding vote to make it happen he's the guy who tries to do things like claiming that there should be a raise in the minimum wage but he doesn't actually want to legislate it right so you know, he it's a facade. He's the Trump hotel uh, or the Trump university or whatever the heck. He's the facade of all of these things. And in this case, it's really hilarious because he's saying a few things here. One of the things he's saying is that somehow we have to make a choice. Again, we have to make a choice between, you know, standing up for democracy against a dictatorship uh, uh, across the world or actually looking after people who he's been actively trying to screw over with his policies, which is kind of like acting like you can either pay your child support or be an involved father. Like, you know, right. m- do both, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> you can do both. There's no reason you can't do both. And, and so it's right. just 
complete bull. And also, I don't know what a globalist is. Um, a Jew, Jason. I'm pretty sure it's a Jew. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty yeah. sure it's a Jew because I I, I, th- I, feel like they've made it synonymous with Soros. You're the, you're the least global globalist I know, Jason. <laughs> well, I, I think I, I am the globalist. As, you know, just as I I'm am the one Jewish, on I'm globalist. Uh, <laughs> and, but, but yeah, man, I mean, like, and, and look, I, I get it. Like, Holly, you know, maybe they'll, he'll probably, you know, take offense to this and he'll, he'll want to jump in and, and, and be oh the my. stuck pig and say, like, Sad. Kander called me a Nazi or I don't know, whatever. And I'm not. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that, like, you know, if Hitler came back and Josh and I lived in the same neighborhood, my family would probably not check on his house as a place to hide, right. you know? So that's, that's well, what I'm saying. Well, let me just highlight the, the East Palestine point one more time. And the, this is something that's dangerous because there's this phenomenon with nonprofits, for example, where if you talk about, you know, one million people we, will be saved if we, you know, get, you know, distribute more bed nets in sub-Saharan Africa, for example, that doesn't move people. But if you say, hey, here's this family and they've now lost three people, here's their names, here's pictures of them. Here's a video of the family suffering and crying at the funeral. That moves people, even though that's a few people versus a million people in the story. And what the GOP is doing here with East Palestine is they're giving it a, a name, a town, and they're saying these are the forgotten people. They're full of shit, but we need mm-hmm. to take seriously the power of this kind of rhetoric. Yeah, I, I would love to know Josh Howey's policies on like rail regulations. Like he's right. actually, I don't think he has them. Right. I mean, right. so it, uh, yeah, look, it's totally ridiculous, but I mean, that it's, it's just such a false equivalency. The idea that we can do one or we can do the other. Also, here's the other Josh Howey move to watch for. And you could see it in that clip is that he is positioning himself. And look, we want to be clear with everybody. We think Josh Hawley is very smart and we think he's yeah. very dangerous. But we also think he's very devious, right? And so we do pay a lot of attention to Josh Hawley because we believe that Josh Hawley is setting up what could be a very effective framework, uh, you know, for, for, a, a really evil agenda, right? And and so one of the ways he does this is like in that clip when he says, and frankly, Tucker, let's be honest, congressional Republicans, that's Josh Hawley's way of positioning himself as a free thinker, right? Mm. He's pretending that by having the position that we shouldn't fund the war in Ukraine, right, that he's somehow breaking with his party. But that's not what's happening. He's, he's uh, aligning with the extreme elements of the party that are actually taking over the majority of the party, particularly in Congress. And that's why Biden has to make a big deal about the one year anniversary of Ukraine to try and keep our assistance of Ukraine funded. Uh, be, and Holly is trying to position himself as some sort of independent voice in the same way that he's cosplaying somebody who cares about working Americans. He does not. My favorite or my least favorite fact about Josh Holly that I will never stop mentioning is that it has been widely reported by people who went to school with him uh, that Josh Holly. Uh, popped popcorn to watch the invasion of Iraq. He popped popcorn and went down the hall and invited people to watch with him in like the dorm at Oxford or wherever he was that he was living in. And he he was like, we got to watch this. It's going to be great. And then Josh Hawley, when he ran for the U.S. Senate, claimed that he had always opposed the war in Iraq. Josh Hawley and I are like within 18 months of each other. I'm not saying everybody needed to enlist. I'm just saying that if you were going to pop popcorn instead of saying that the war in Iraq was a bad idea, then I should have seen your ass out there in places like Afghanistan. Yeah, you know what he was doing during the Iraq war? He was... He was with me at Bulldog Burritos in New Haven, Connecticut. <laughs> That's exactly what he was. <laughs> he was not carrying a rifle. Yeah, uh, and, and and you know what? That's fine. Don't just don't pretend later that you were like against it right. or that you were like right. out. You know what I mean? It's just what a what a, a walking nothing, man. 